What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy, and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO. And this time, I think we're actually taking a look at what is our very first expanded uh, video on here. Um, I'll have to go through the rest of our videos, but if I'm not mistaken, I think this was the only one that we've... Actually, no, I take that back. We did do, I think it was a Gardevoir deck at one point. But yeah, just in general, we haven't covered expanded much, but since there are several expanded regionals uh, coming up soon... And since the post-rotation format at the time of filming is not yet up on PTCGO, I thought like it might be a decent time to revisit the expanded format and see what you can maybe expect uh, now that Burning Shadows is kind of thrown into the mix. So for this one, we're going to be taking a look at Night March featuring the new Mars Shadow GX that recently released in Burning Shadows. So if anyone who's played uh, the Pokemon TCG for a couple of years now is probably familiar with this Night March uh, archetype was one of the most dominant decks when it was legal in standard format uh, once upon a time ago but even expanded is still a solid deck and now that it has the new Mars Shadow uh, you know it gets a little bit of a boost so let's take a look at it and see uh, what the hype is all about so before we get to Mars Shadow let's take a look at really what makes the Night March archetype work so first off we're playing for Lampent. And you might be thinking, well, where's your Chandelures and Litwicks? Well, we don't really need those because we are basically basing the entire deck around this Night March attack. So Night March does 20 times the number of Pokemon in your discard pile that have the Night March attack. So we're playing four Lampents just to throw them in the discard, just to bo boost up our damage output. But we're also playing four Pumpkaboo, which also has this Night March attack for three colorless energy, or two colorless energy if you have a dimension value in play. Uh, then we also have a Joltik, uh, four of these guys as well, so just for two colorless energy, Night March, 20 times the amount of Night Marchers in your discard pile. Pretty self-explanatory, so we're basically just trying to throw as many of these Night March Pokemon in our discard pile as possible in order to hit big numbers with this attack. So previously, this Night March archetype has also played a copy of Mew, which we are still choosing to include one of. For this Memories of Dawn attack, uh, Mew can use the attacks of all of your basic Pokemon in play. So this is cool because we can, um, you know, copy Joltik's attack and not need a Dimension Valley in play if we want to hit for uh, maybe Psychic Weakness or something like that. But Mew also has free retreat costs, which can also be nice. Uh, in between turns when your Pokemon get knocked out. So Mew is kind of cool because you can attack with him while keeping your Night Marchers safe on the bench. That's kind of the extra Pokemon Night Marchers played in the past, but the new one that is going to be featured is going to be the new Marshadow GX. So even though it has a couple of fighting type attacks, we're really only looking at it for the ability Shadow Hunt. This Pokemon can use the attacks of any basic Pokemon in your discard pile, but you still need the necessary energy to use each attack. So the idea is, now that we have Marsh Shadow, we can actually throw even more Night March Pokemon in the discard pile. Because previously, your damage output was normally capped around 180-ish, uh, maybe 190, maybe around 200 uh, at max. Just because you still needed a decent amount of Pokemon in the discard, but you still need a couple of Night March Pokemon in play to attack with. The Marsh is kind of cool because he lets you get a little extra aggressive at times and throw even more Night March Pokemon in the discard to hit for even bigger numbers. So this Night March deck is honestly almost kind of turned into a little bit of a toolbox in terms of the typings in it. So now you have Marsh Shadow so you can hit for fighting weakness against things maybe like Darkrai EX or maybe uh, Minetric or Mega Minetric EX. You have the Mew and Pumpkaboos to hit for Psychic Weakness and then you have the Joltix, I think a little bit more importantly to hit for weakness against on things like um, Eveltal EX and Mega Rayquaza EX. So you have a nice variety now of Pokemon that can um, you know hit for different uh, weaknesses in the game. So that's why we we're playing the new Marsha. It just lets us get a little bit more aggressive and throw even more Pokemon in the discard pile. So for the rest of our Pokemon, we are going to be playing two Shaman EX for its setup ability. Whenever you bench Shaman, you get to draw until you have six cards in your hand. So on the early turns of this Night March deck, you are really trying to just dig through your deck and draw as much as possible to throw as many of these Night Marchers in the discard pile. And then the last Pokemon that we're going to play is going to be one Tapu Lele GX just for its Wonder Tag ability. So whenever you bench Tapu Lele, you get search your deck for a supporter card, uh, reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, but it is worth knowing you can also use Energy Drive for just a double colorless energy, 20 times the amount of energy on both active Pokemon. 
So if you're playing against a deck that it does something like, uh, you know, plays a Karen against you to shuffle all of your Pokemon from your discard back into your deck, you might still have the option to use Tapu Lele to attack with until you get your Night Marchers back in your discard pile. Uh, but debatably, you might even be able to cut Tapu Lele for a third Shaman altogether. Um, you know, if you really want the extra aggression on the first couple turns. So I think that is an option as well. But since uh, Guardians Rising wasn't even legal for the expanded format, or I should say there were no expanded Guardians Rising tournaments, I haven't really tested with Tapu Lele in Night March, so it, you know, it just seems like a good, good card to include. So that's going to be the entire Pokemon line. Going into the trainers, uh, we'll start with our supporter cards. We're playing two Professor Sycamore, discard your hand, and draw seven. Um, one copy of N, that's our other main form of draw power. Each player shuffles their hand in their deck and draws the equal amount of prize cards they have left. So it might actually seem like an insanely low supporter count, especially if you're more familiar with the standard format where players are playing, you know, three and four copies of both these cards. But with the draw power from Shaman and all of the uh, deck thinning cards that we're playing, which we'll get to in a second, uh, it's really not that hard to hit, um, you know, supporters and methods of drawing through your deck. So we're also playing one copy of Teammates. You can only play this card if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Search your deck for two cards and put them into your hand. So Teammates has historically been a card that's been very strong, mainly in one prize attacking decks, like this Night March deck. So if you choose to, you know, you could even go a non-EX, non-GX route for the entire game if you wanted to. But anyways, so decks where your opponent is forced to take, you know, three, four, five knockouts in the game, teammates really becomes very, very um, beneficial because you can abuse this multiple times throughout the course of a game. Just to search out any two cards is very good, especially since we play things like Puzzle of Time in this list and other cards that help make for combos for us to pull off. So teammates just a very strong card in these one prize attacker decks. Next up, we're playing one Lysander. Switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with his or her active Pokemon, just to choose what we want to take knockouts on. And debatably, you could change this to a Guzma if you want, but for now, I'm just going to try the Lysander and see how that does. One copy of Hex Maniac until the end of your opponent's next turn. Each Pokemon in play, hand, and discard has no abilities. So especially with Night March, you can actually do some pretty degenerate plays with this deck, where you you know dig through your deck. You know you can draw half, maybe half your deck with Shamans and Battle Compressors and Lele and all that stuff, and then end your turn with a Hex Maniac to shut off abilities on your opponent's next turn. But it's also good against a number of other decks, uh, mainly Greninja Break. Also could be good against Trevenant as well. You just have to be careful not to shut off your own Marshadow and Muse abilities. Uh, but yeah, just a very good uh, card. And the last support is going to be one AZ. Put one Pokemon uh, into your hand. So, oh, and you do have to discard all cards attached to that Pokemon. So you might be thinking, well, Acerola just came out in Burning Shadows. Why not play this? Well, the reason I'm choosing to play AZ in this list is because um, ideally with Night March, you want to play a bunch of Shamans you know, in the early portions of the game, but in the late game, they're kind of just like sitting ducks, and AZ lets you deny your opponent, uh, like, easy two prizes, uh, also lets you reuse those shamans and tapuleles if you choose to as well, uh, but it's mainly to deny prizes and or reuse our shamans. Okay, so we have four versus secret just to reuse all those different supporters. Uh, a lot of these cards are pretty standard. I'm not going to spend too much time on any of them, just just because this deck profile is going on for a little while now. But the other, I think, really key component to this deck is going to be four copies of Battle Compressor. Search your deck for three cards and discard them. So if you're not familiar with the expanded format, this actually might look like a really weird card at first glance. Why would you want to discard cards? But like I said, it's to mainly throw all of your Night March Pokemon in the discard pile, but also you can put supporters in your discard pile to get out with Versus Seeker as well. So Battle Compressor is kind of really what makes this deck tick. A um, couple of other things pretty standard for Ultra Ball, for Trainer's Mail, just to help us speed along throughout this deck. Uh, one special charge, shuffle two special energies from your discard pile into your deck. We only play four double colorless energy in the entire deck, so we want to make sure we can uh, be able to reuse those. Uh, for Puzzle of Time, we are mainly playing it for its second effect. If you play two Puzzle of Time at once, you get two cards from your discard into your hand. Uh, just 
It can be good if you know your opponent plays a Karen and makes you shuffle all of your Pokemon back into your deck. You can use Puzzle of Time to get your Battle Compressors back out and start you know, putting your Night Marchers in the discard pile yet again. Also good to get double colorless energies and also get your Stadiums back out as well. Uh, just a number of good uses for Puzzle of Time. Let's see, you're playing uh, one Computer Search. Discard two cards from your hand and search your deck for any card. So this is a very aggressive deck. Computer Search will allow us to just continue to dig through our deck and uh, you know be extra aggressive. And it's also good because we can get ourselves double colorless energies, most importantly, since we don't really have any other way to search them out of our deck. Let's see, we're also playing two Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, the basic Pokemon this card is attached to gets 40 more hit points and does 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So ideally we can put these on our Marsh Shadows or you know whatever Pokemon that we really want to tank hits with and be our main attacker. Uh, just to give them a little bit more HP. And this is actually very important for a couple matchups. Uh, Trevenant and Trevenant Break are going to be very, very rough for you. Uh, just because Trevenant Break can actually just knock out all of your Joltix in one sweep if you do... Uh, or you know, choose to or are forced to bench some Joltix at some point. Um, but just in general, you know, all these Pokemon are pretty fragile, so Fighting Fury Bell is just good in a number of different decks, or against a number of different decks. And I guess the last very notable card is going to be three copies of Dimension Valley. Each Psychic Pokemon in play pays one less colorless energy to use their attacks. So if we get this in play, we can use uh, Pumpkaboo's attack for just one double colorless energy as opposed to three uh, colorless energy. Uh, it can also reduce the cost of our Muse and Tapu Lele's attacks. Not that it really makes a difference in this particular deck, um, but just something worth pointing out, I suppose. But like I said, it's mainly going to be there to reduce our Pumpkaboo's uh, attack cost. So yeah, guys, that's going to be the Night March deck we're going to be trying out. And actually, over on our Patreon, we're going to have a short article uh, detailing some other techs you could potentially put in this deck, and actually an entirely other way you could potentially build this. So if you want to learn about that or check that out, I'll definitely have a link to our Patreon if you want to learn how to access that as well. But anyways, we're going to head over into a battle and show you how this deck looks in action, okay? All right, guys, so it looks like we got ourselves a game here, and just going to call the coin flip which I do win, which is definitely a good thing. And here our opponent has a Darkrai deck box, so we might potentially be going at some sort of Dark variant, which is definitely possible and expanded since uh, Dark is even better since it has things like Darkrai EX, also things like um, Dark Patch, Hypnotoxic Laser, all sorts of other stuff you could potentially put in the archetype. So here we're just going to probably take those Mulligan cards we're being offered. And here we actually have a pretty workable hand. So we have Battle Compressor. That's probably going to be the first thing we're going to play. And here our opponent gives us an angry face. <laughs> uh, so sorry to uh, Gladiator06. <laughs> sorry you had to play Night March. But here we're going to use Battle Compressor to discard some of these Lampants since they're pretty worthless. They really are just there to help increase our damage output. But also want a Joltik in the discard pile because... Uh, that way our Marshadow GX can copy Joltik's attack. Since the Lampant requires, I think, a Psychic Energy to use its Night March attack, uh, Joltik is definitely the preferred uh, target there. But here we're going to use Ultra Ball, discarding a Hex Maniac and a Trainer's Mail, grabbing a Marshadow. So that's good. That's definitely going to be our preferred attacker. Since Darkrai EX, GX, etc. are all weak to Dark Pokemon, uh, we don't really need many Night Marchers in the discard pile, so Night or Marshadow is definitely going to be our preferred uh, attacker here. So here we're going to play both Puzzles of Time. I hate burning them this early, but um, you know we have some decent targets. We can grab this Battle Compressor to keep putting stuff in our discard pile. So we can grab that other Lampant, this Pumpkaboo. And it looks like I'm second guessing the third Pumpkaboo, and I think that's actually a good move because we don't have any supporters in the discard pile. Uh, we're going to use our only Verse Seeker at the moment for Hex, probably, uh, before I end the turn. Uh, but I want another supporter in there just in case we draw into a Verse Seeker. Uh, but here we get a Sycamore off this Trainer's Mount either way, so we're going to be in a fine spot since we use, like I said, this Verse Seeker for Hex, probably. And then we'll have a Sycamore ready to go on the next turn. Here we're going to use Shaman EX, draw until we have six cards in hand. 
Okay, um, got a pump kaboo, got a battle compressor, got a double car with energy. Um, what I might actually consider doing is we could play battle compressor, but I really don't know what our opponent has. Do they play Karen in their deck? That's a consideration. I don't want to unnecessarily burn this battle compressor. Um, we don't have to. So here I think I'm just going to hex and then pass. Uh, the only downside to not attaching this energy is that it's going to force us to have a switch card. But the reason I did not attach it is because Jiltic can be very easily knocked out. And also, also Marsh Shadow is not uh, the beefiest of Pokemon either. So with all the Battle Compressors and Max Luxors and stuff like that, I didn't want to take a chance that our opponent still had an out to taking out our Marsh Shadow. So I might have played that a little too defensively. Uh, maybe I should have attached the Double Carlos Energy, but either way, I think we'll be okay. But here I draw and do two more Double Carlos Energies, Puzzle of Time and N. I don't like this hand quite as much as the last one, but let's see what we get here. And again, Ultra Ball, so that actually might be okay. So what we can do is we can get rid of probably this Mew and then the N. And we can grab Tapu Lewy to actually grab AZ to pick up this Joltik. So here I'm just going to double check. AZ is indeed in the deck still, so let's do that. We're going to grab Tapu Lele, use that nifty wonder tag ability to grab a supporter. Here we're going to grab AZ, picking up this Joltik, get it out of the active spot, and that will allow us to attack with our Marshadow GX. Guess we're going to attach that double Carlos energy, and uh, I forget how many Night Marchers we have in the discard pile. I think it's five. Okay, so it's five. So uh, normally that would only do 100 damage, but since Darkrai EX is weak to fighting, we're going to do 200 here. So already off to a pretty solid start here. So we're going to take two prizes. So we have a Verse Seeker and another Joltik. Those are okay to get, I suppose. So here our opponent is going to use Darkrai GX's Restoration. Let's them get Darkrai GX out of the discard pile with an energy and attach it to him. So I'm actually kind of scared of a return knockout here. If our opponent can like Dark Patch, attach for turn, and just retreat. Um, well, they would need a Choice Band as well. So if they get that combo, they could actually knock out Marsh out. And here our opponent plays their own Marsh Shadow GX, most likely for the Mirror match, I'm assuming. So it's definitely possible for them to knock out my Marshall GX, but it really just depends on what they get here. They do have abilities this turn finally, so they might be able to play some Shamans or some other stuff to keep digging and uh, set up a little bit. But as for right now, what does our opponent have? It looks like they're taking a minute to, to decide what they're going to do, so they must have something. So they're going to attach for turn to the Marsh. That's interesting. So they're going to Dark Patch to the Darkrai. And let's see what else they're going to choose to do here. Okay, they're going to play Choice Ban. So, what else? Hmm. So, by the way our opponent's playing, I think we're okay. I don't think we're really at risk at being knocked out. Uh, the only thing... Yeah, I, I just don't see it. Our opponent would definitely need a little bit more energy in play to knock us out with like a Darkrai EX. Uh, Darkrai EX does 20 plus 20 more for every Dark Energy they have in play. So that is something we will have to be careful of at some point, but let's see what our opponent put in the discard. Uh, looks like nothing too relevant. So here they have a third energy on Darkrai. And okay, just a pass. So we're actually in a good spot. So we can use Verse Seeker to get rid of um, Sycamore here, or or to use Sycamore, I should say. But maybe we should just use Hex. Oh no, we won't be able to because then our own Marsh Shadow wouldn't be able to attack. That's actually pretty bad. Um, so that's definitely not the play. So probably just Sycamore and take a knockout on this Darkrai EX if I had to guess. That way we can put some extra Night Marchers in the discard pile. Uh, it sucks we will have to get rid of that. A third puzzle of time because that will basically eliminate the play of doing another double puzzle at some point. Uh, but here we get a fighting fury belt, which is actually really good as well. That can maybe ensure that this Marsh doesn't get knocked out on our opponent's next turn. So we do have an escape rope 
we could play. But honestly, I think we're fine just continuing to take a knockout with this Marshall GX. There's not too much I think we really need to play. Uh, we can put down the Dimension Valley just to thin it out in case we get end to two. Uh, but the other cards, I don't really... We don't need to play them right now. So let's just Night March. Take a knockout on the Starcry EX. Uh, and here our opponent just concedes. So I do have to apologize, guys. I played probably... 10 or 11 games with this and everyone people quit or you know something like that but this was the best one i was able to find so i do apologize but either way i hope you guys enjoyed uh you know seeing how night march uh does with this new march shadow gx card but as usual feel free to like and subscribe and if you can support us either on our patreon or picking something up on our online store it'd mean a lot to us but with that i appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one